Today we're going to talk about how to install a TFT display by Big Tree Tech on the SKR version 2. Now this display is somewhat unusual in that you can either use TFT or you can use the legacy Marlin emulator. So what I'm going to do is show you how to hook up both at this time and then we'll go through how they work. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to flip this over so you can see the back side because the front side is kind of obvious. So on the back, we have what's known as an SWD port. This is used to load firmware on this board, but most people will load it via the SD card. There's an individual processor on here. Also, we have ports for EXP1 and 2 that are down here on this board that we'll use a ribbon cable to actually work with. We also have an SD port, and then we have external power on this particular version for 5 volts. That's what it runs on. And then we have our TFT connection right here, which is something that corresponds over here on the board. So what I'm going to do now is first show you how to hook up the actual board for the uh, ribbon cable. So I'm going to tilt this board a little and you can see EXP2. So I'm just going to connect that with the notch connector. Then I'm going to find EXP2 on the board and do the notch connector as well. Then what I'll do is I'll connect EXP1 while I'm at it. And then we'll connect both of these back up to the board. So this one's coming from EXP1. So we've got it right here. And then we'll do EXP2 right here. That's just so that it's easier to work with. So now that we have that actually connected, we can test this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this in the USB position for power, which is these two pins, and put the jumper on. That way we can power the board and see if it works. So that appears to work. And right now it's currently in the Marlin mode on here because there's two modes. If you hold this down, you can then turn this and then click once and it'll bring up the other mode. But this currently will not work until we connect it correctly. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to connect the notch connector to the back of this. So I'm gonna disconnect the power, I'm gonna match up the notch right here and connect it. Now unfortunately we don't know right away how to connect this. This is actually the reset pin that is separate and then you have your regular pins. So we're gonna to have to look that up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the browser in a second, and we're actually going to check to see what that actual configuration is. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you the actual website in two seconds here. So here's the actual website. This is for GitHub for Big Tree Tech. So I'm gonna click on repositories just so you can see how to search and type TFT. And this will bring up a bunch of different TFTs, but that's not what we're looking for right now. We're looking for our board, which is SKR, and we'll say space two. So I'll click on that, then I'll go over to hardware, and I'll find the file that says pins. So inside this file, you'll notice it says TFT right here. And then over here it says 5 volts ground, PA9, PA10. Those are our pinout numbers. And then we have a reset. So now we know how to install it. So we're going to go back over to the display and set this up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to align these like so, so I know the reset's here. I'm going to then connect these first four pins and then we'll connect the last one, which is reset down here. So now if we were to pull the plug on these for just a moment and plug it in, it should power. And it does.
So now that we understand that, I'm just going to plug these back in and I'm going to show you how to configure this in Marlin. So in Marlin, we're going to have to use the SD drive. So in order to do that, I have to pull this drive out right here. And I need to put it in this device right here so we can actually load it. So I'm going to slide that in and I'm going to place this in the computer. And if you're looking for this particular hardware, I'll put it up on my web page so that you can find it. So let's go over to VS Code. Inside VS Code right now, what we need to do is actually load the firmware. Now I've already downloaded and extracted the firmware, so I'm going to click on Explorer, then Open Folder. I'm going to go to my Downloads folder, then Marlin 2.0, Marlin 2.0, then Select folder. Now that it's open, what we need to do is actually configure this. So in order to do that, they've defaulted you to the platform io.ini. And I just highlighted the default environment, which is for a Mega 2560. That's the original configuration for ramps. We're not using that. That's not our chipset. So I'll show you how to sort that out. So we're going to go over to the Marlin folder then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside here, we're going to search on skr underscore v2. <clears throat> Pardon me. And what you can see here are two different boards. Now, the Rev A board is a defective board, so you don't want to use that. So you're going to have to check the back of your actual board or the link that I leave in the description so you can see how to get that replaced. Marlin is taking care of that. So we're going to use the Rev B board, which is right here. So I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to go back up from source and go to configuration.h and search on motherboard. Now that I found the motherboard, I'm going to highlight the ramps board and paste our board over it. Up here, I'm going to change the serial port to negative one. That's the one that we're using for our motherboard for communication. Now, these can be reversed, but I'm going to remove the comment for the second serial port. And this one we're going to set to one. That's for our TFT display. Now, I'm going to search on, uh, what is it, uh, SD support. And this is for your LCD if you're using the Marlin Legacy mode. Now you can pick your own language, obviously. So there's many to choose from. Obviously, there's Russian or Ruska, Poliska, uh, Deutschland or German, and various other ones. But for now, we're going to skip that and just assume it's English. Next, I'll show you that there's different types of character sets you can work with, but I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. And then, of course, there's different styles. Down here, there's uh, CRC support, where if we have the SD card enabled and there's an issue, you can set up a retry situation to reread the actual drive. But keep in mind, there may be a Marlin bug that causes issues where it won't read off the actual display and it will read off the card that's inserted in the motherboard. It may be fixed by the time of recording this tutorial, but I'm not sure. So there are other settings down here that you can change. I'm not going to go over all of these, but there's different things that you can do, like reversing your encoder and how it actually moves. But these are not really relevant at this moment. Down here, there's a RepRap Discount Smart Controller. That's not the one we're going to be working with. So I'm going to copy that and paste and find the second one, which is the RepRap Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller. So I'm going to remove the comment so we can enable that. So I'll click over here, and that will remove the comment. Now we need to set it up to compile. And like we saw before, we went to source core boards.h this is the actual category we're in for the chipset so we need to find our board and then we need to find out what its abbreviation is so it says stm32f4 
So we're going to minimize this for a moment. We're going to go over to the I and I, and we're going to find that. So it's STM 32F4. So in here, we're going to search on SKR underscore V2, and it might not come up. So let's just do SKR underscore. So we're going to scroll down a little bit, and you should see it right here. It's the Big Tree Tech SKR underscore two. So I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to close out of this file and I'm going to go over to platform io.ini. And as you can see, this is the set of folders it's actually pointing to over here. So we're just going to highlight the mega 2560 and paste the big tree underscore SKR underscore two here so that we can use it. Next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to clean up our build because in this case, I have the Mega 2560 here. So I'm going to clean that out by clicking here. So as you can see now, it's now gone. So we're going to click on the Compile or Build checkbox and build our actual firmware.bin. Now, keep in mind, if this fails the very first time that you compile, try a second time. So as you can see, in this case, it did fail. So we're going to try it again. And the reason this may happen is something might build out of order. So if this happens a third time, you're going to have to go find the very first place where your build fails and correct that issue because the other issues that follow that may be a cascade of issues that are caused by the first. So as soon as this finishes, we're going to go over the .pio folder for the build, then Big Tree Tech SKR, and inside here you'll see firmware.bin in a moment. So as soon as this pops as an actual completed build, we can right click on it and say view in file explorer. So it's about to happen any second now. So here it comes. So you're going to see firmware.bin, you're going to right click on that. You're going to say reveal in file explorer let me make this a little bit bigger and then we're going to copy it over to here but my new habit is i like to delete this this is the old firmware.bin that's been renamed to firmware.cur they like to call it current but technically it's a cursor file so i'm just going to delete that for now because it may prevent us from loading the build and then i'm going to go back over and I'm going to right click on firmware.bin and I'm going to send it to the E drive. Now we can double check that it's there. So that's all good. We'll go back over to the actual workbench and I'm going to copy or remove the USB drive and place it inside here. So when we actually load this, we're going to use USB powered because we want to be safe. So it's set to the USB pins. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in and it will begin to flash down there. Now, a couple of issues that you might encounter when working with this is the default speed is a quarter million bits. So if your LCD comes up as not connected or no printer attached, click on, let's see, settings. Then go to, in this case, connection, then go to baud rate and change your baud rate to a quarter million, then go back, then back, then back, then back. And as you can see, that issue is now gone. Now, there are other issues that can occur, um, one of which is that uh, you're not selecting the correct secondary serial port. But we're going to avoid talking about that for the moment. If you're interested in learning more about how to update the firmware or change this, I have a tutorial that I'll put in the upper right hand corner that you can work with. But for the moment, what we're going to do is just make sure we can swap to the other one. So I'm going to hold this down. I'm going to go over to Marlin mode and click. And as you can see, we can see our media menu of things that we can choose from. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And for all my patrons, thank you very much. I appreciate 
your help creating these tutorials.